This episode is brought to you by CuriosityStream, home to thousands of documentaries and nonfiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers, including exclusive originals. Sign up using the link and promo code below to start a one-month trial absolutely free. In space, distance is relative. On Earth, 19,000 miles is a really long way. That's about three quarters of the planet's circumference. But once you start measuring distances in space, 19,000 miles is nothing. That's why many scientists are keeping a close eye on the asteroid Apophis, which in 10 years will pass just 19,000 miles from Earth, basically skimming the surface in cosmological terms. To put in perspective just how close Apophis will be, consider the fact that the asteroid will pass between weather satellites and the Earth. In this episode, we're going to look at why Apophis is such a big deal and what would happen if it collided with Earth. Apophis, named after the Egyptian god of chaos, is classified as a potentially hazardous asteroid. An asteroid is given this designation if it meets a certain size and proximity to Earth threshold, and Apophis definitely checks both boxes. The god of chaos asteroid is a whopping 340 meters across, making it one of the largest specimens to pass so close to Earth. To put 340 meters in perspective, that's 13% taller than the Eiffel Tower. Before we get to just how disastrous it would be if Apophis crashed into the Earth, let's look at the positive aspects of its visit. The 2029 flyby of the God of Chaos will likely be the best chance scientists will get to study it up close, since its next visit in 2036 will be a much safer 36 million miles away. NASA workers are excited to use this close flyby to learn more about asteroids like Apophis and potentially develop a plan to prevent collisions in the future. One NASA scientist says, the Apophis close approach in 2029 will be an incredible opportunity for science. But not only the world's space agencies will benefit from our cosmic visitor. Average people will also be able to spot the asteroid zipping across the sky in 2029. It's expected to shine about as brightly as the surrounding stars, and will cover the distance of the moon in the sky in about 60 seconds. Those in Australia will be able to see it first as it arrives in the night sky over the southern hemisphere, traveling across Australia from east to west. It should continue to rocket along its trajectory, picking up speed as it goes, before becoming visible to the United States in the evening. This will be the asteroid's point of closest approach, as it blasts over the Atlantic Ocean. At its estimated speed, Apophis should cross the ocean in a single hour and continue off into space. The Earth is no stranger to asteroid impacts. The planet has been pummeled by some serious behemoths over its long, tumultuous life. Thankfully, Apophis isn't nearly as large as, say, the monster that left the Chicxulub crater in the Yucatan Peninsula and likely caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. That particular impactor is estimated to have been anywhere between 11 and 81 kilometers in diameter. That's a staggering 32 to 238 times larger than Apophis. That's not to say an Apophis impact wouldn't be bad. In fact, it would be devastating wherever it hit. Smaller objects have caused widespread devastation in the past. Take the Tunguska event, for example. In 1908, a meteoroid somewhere between 50 and 190 meters across exploded in the sky above the Siberian taiga. The blast flattened 2,000 kilometers of forest, shattered windows hundreds of kilometers away, knocked witnesses off their feet, and caused at least three human casualties. The fortunate and scary thing about the Tunguska event is that it happened over very sparsely populated land and still managed to cause serious damage to cities hundreds of kilometers away. Imagine if the same event happened today over a densely populated area like New York. The Tunguska meteoroid exploded 5 to 10 kilometers from the surface and still flattened 80 million trees and released the energy of a 15 kiloton nuclear weapon. That's about a thousand times more powerful than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima or roughly one-third of the power of the Soviet Union's Tsar Bomba, the largest nuclear device ever detonated. Here's a size comparison between the Tunguska impactor and Apophis. If the Tunguska impactor can produce such a massive amount of destructive force, just think about what an asteroid two to six times as large could do. It would destroy entire cities, and the loss of life would be tremendous, not to mention the financial cost, likely to exceed billions of dollars. Scientists say there's only a one in a hundred thousand chance of Apophis colliding with the Earth. But that's still 23 times more likely than being struck by lightning. When Apophis makes its 2029 close approach to Earth, the planet's gravity will change its trajectory. Let's hope Apophis doesn't come back with a vengeance in the future. If you're like me and you love learning about topics like this, I highly recommend you check out Modern Day Killer Asteroid on CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is the world's first streaming service for people like us, people on a lifelong quest to learn and understand. They've got thousands of documentaries from some of the best filmmakers in the game, and they've got a bunch of material on astronomy, like Modern Day Killer Asteroid. They have a huge catalog, including content on science, nature, astronomy, technology, and lifestyle. Unlimited access starts at just $2.99 a month, and as a special offer just for you guys, you can get one month absolutely free by following the link below and using the code SECONDTHOUGHT during sign up.
CuriosityStream is available on all sorts of platforms, including the web app, Roku, Android, Xbox One, Smart TVs, iOS, Chromecast, Amazon Fire, Kindle, and Apple TV. So wherever you are, you'll always have access to great, interesting content. Give CuriosityStream a shot and sign up for your one-month free trial by visiting curiositystream.com secondthought and using the code secondthought.